Welcome to the Your Brother Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. How's it going, Dan? That was like an aggressive kind of yeah, intro, like, wasn't it? Like, Mike Smith, Mike Smith, let's get on with this already. He's going to get the show started. So June 12th, 2023, mm-hmm. when we're recording this episode, Mike, we're gonna do a f- we're gonna do a review on a film that came out two months ago, not quite to the day, but a couple of months ago. Uh, it is now currently streaming on Prime. I hope I've seen it. It's a little film about a little company called Nike, and it's a film called oh, Air. Okay. So this film Air, which of course uh, was directed by Ben Affleck, stars Matt Damon, Jason Bateman. Uh, some other actors in there we might talk about. Viola Davis, of course, is in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's the you, trio, basically. It's the trio, yeah. And it, and actually, I should say Chris Tucker, who's in it. Yeah. So I had no, I wasn't planning on seeing this anytime soon, if at all. It might have slipped down out of my radar. And, and I was you had, pushing you. You were pushing me. And you said, not that long ago, you said, you know, I, I think you should watch it. It's not really it's not a film about basketball. Mm-hmm. It's not really what it's about. And you said there's all these cool like eighties references yeah. because of, you know, this is, and so, um, but be- so before we get into it, give us uh, the very famous Mike synopsis <laughs> of the film air. You haven't really done that in quite some time. Yeah. So, but I know this is one that you're jazzed up and you can do it like, you know, in your sleep. Yeah. It's easy. It's basically about how in the early 80s converse ruled the basketball world in the nba you had larry bird and magic johnson doing commercials together i heard converse made a pair of bird shoes for last year's mvp yep well they made a pair of magic shoes for this year's mvp okay magic show me what you got the bird shoe, the magic shoe. Choose your weapon from Converse. Athletes pick their college based on what shoes they have contracts with. That's how right. big an issue this was and still is. So Nike, um, a guy named Sonny Vaccaro, real person, Saw Michael Jordan play at North Carolina. He was maybe going to be the fourth or fifth pick in the draft. But Sonny Vaccaro was betting that he was going to be a big star. Mm -hmm. And it really didn't seem that way if you watched his career. He was a solid player. But North Carolina was that kind of a program. Mm -hmm. And he decided to go to his boss, Phil Knight, who basically was the owner starter of Nike and said, we should build a campaign Mm -hmm. around Michael Jordan for our shoes. Yeah. Because Nike was of the sports companies, you know, Mm -hmm. athletic companies, they were flailing. They were like in the third. They were, and I made a note here. So this is, this 1984 Converse has 56% Mm -hmm. of Of the the market market. share at Mm -hmm. that point. Nike has 17 and Adidas was second. Right. Reebok wasn't even in the conversation. No, it wasn't. And it's interesting because you'll, you learn later that Vaccaro actually left Nike and then eventually ended up with Reebok passing through Adidas along the way. So ironically, he ended up with those two companies. Right. And, um, but yeah, Adidas, you know, that was one of the interesting things that they talk about in the film. You mentioned again, all the kind of eighties pop culture references. Mm -hmm. And part of it was, you know, uh, they mentioned run DMC, for example, legendary hip hop group Mm -hmm. and how they were wearing Adidas and, you know, it was showing up in the videos and this, that, and the other thing of the day. Right. So, you know, they, they had this popularity that Nike just, Nike was for like people that run, you know, they're runners. Yeah. So they buy running shoes. You know, it's yeah. not necessarily something that is attracting the top athletes or even top prospects of the day. And you remember in the day, you know, basketball players wore high tops. You don't well, see con- anyone wearing high tops anymore. Those Converse, the Chucks, the famous well, Chucks. Yeah. And, and those aren't really, you know, I don't consider them because they're, they don't, they're so, uh, they're just like cloth material. Right. I never liked Converse. I, I never. I never did it. I never owned a pair. 
No, and one of our siblings worked there for, for yeah. a little while. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, so, okay. So what was your, I mean, you liked the film, I guess, clearly. You had already shared that with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. What? I what? Did. You're shaking your head, no? Well, there were, there were elements that I didn't like, but I overall, oh, okay. I, I said to you, this is really an acting movie. It's really about acting. It's not about basketball per se. Well, it's not a movie about acting. Well, no, but (laughs) that's why I liked it. I thought it was well acted. The performances, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was released on April 5th. Uh, You had said to me, you know, there's even this cool, like there's a reference to Bruce Springsteen. Yes. Twice. And well, little did I know that the film both opens and closes to a Springsteen song. Yeah. Right. Which was born in the USA, which ironically, Bruce was known famously for never letting his songs be used right. for commercial purposes. Right. So it's it's funny that it's it's in a movie. It about, changed along the way, you know. And he just sold his catalog, too. So I wonder I if they still had to go through at the time of this. I don't know how long it was that they started production on this, but. I'm sure they had to get permission from the camp somewhere along the line, but. Oh, definitely. You know, but so Jason Bateman plays uh, Rob Strasser, who's like the marketing executive, the head of marketing at Nike. You mentioned Affleck, who plays Phil Knight, the CEO. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Damon is Sonny Vaccaro. Chris Tucker plays Howard. I can't think of his last name off the top of my head, but who I thought was great. You know, I haven't seen Chris Tucker in some time. Yeah, and he was a Howard scaled White. back. Howard White. He was and a scaled back Chris Tucker. What I was think. his relationship with Jordan? Did he play with him in college? Remember, well, he cause... was a basketball player. I I don't know if they played together. Oh I don't no, think you so. know, he went no, to a no. competing college. Yeah, actually, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Wayans, right? One of the Wayans brothers is in it. Right. Small part. Small part. Right. Marlon Wayans is in it, and plays this guy George who mm-hmm. knew Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ends up talking to Sonny in a bar about their relationship or whatever, but, um, cause he's trying to get Damon's character, Sonny Vaccaro is trying to get access to Jordan for a meet, right? Because Correct. they want to try to get him to sign with Nike and they're being told, he's uh, Adidas, he's, he's co- complete, never not interested in taking a meeting, never going to happen. Yeah. Don't, you know, and, and so Damon eventually, um, goes around everybody, including Jordan's agent. Mm-hmm. And pays a visit to North Carolina in Jordan's family home. He asked permission from the agent. The agent said no. Well, he so said it, it would not be uh, advisable to to call them on the phone. Right. So what does Damon do? He rents he a car up. and he drives to North Carolina mm-hmm. and he shows up. And then that's when, talk a little bit about Viola Davis as uh, portraying Dolores, which is Michael Jordan's mother. She she was the gatekeeper, basically. You know, you didn't get mm-hmm. to Michael, you got to her. And then if, you know, if she gave you the okay, you could maybe talk to Michael, but he still wasn't this guy. You know, ironically, he became the guy on everything. But, you know, Michael became the spokesperson for so many products. He did. Now, how much license do you think they took in the film with this? Um, you know, you talked about Sonny Vaccaro mm-hmm. going to them and basically pitching to Phil Knight. Listen, I want to bank all the budget, $250,000 on signing Jordan. Mm-hmm. Right. And but he does this after, you know, it's all about it's all but over. Like, there's no hope, you know. Right, because Adidas like, made that offer correct. with a, a brand new, a brand new shiny a Mercedes. Car. Yeah, yeah, which was requested by Jordan. It was like a red Mercedes yeah. something or other. So anyways, yeah. but there's a scene of Damon as Vaccaro watching these VHS recordings of basketball games. And one mm-hmm. of them is the championship game in, what, 1982, where Jordan hit the winning shot or whatever. Yeah, and he watched it over and over. He keeps repeating the sequence Mm -hmm. of when Jordan gets the ball and shoots the famous shot. And over and over, and they're, trying, they're zooming in as he's, re- and I'm trying to see what what is what are we getting at here? And later he explains in the film to, I think, Jason Bateman, or maybe it was Phil Knight, mm-hmm. um, what, he, what he picked up on in that sequence, right? Mm-hmm. 
because it was James Worthy who was a who was really one of the stars at North Carolina. Correct. That, right? Like I said, they they had a phenomenal system. There yeah. was no real standout. No. You know, one night it would be this guy, one night it would be this guy. But and it they clearly had four wasn't guys like that. You did not expect Jordan to be the one, this no. young, this 18 year old, to be getting to be put in that situation. But as Vaccaro witnesses in the in the sequence on film, he says, look at Jordan. He doesn't have the ball. He's just kind of, you mm -hmm. know, out on the perimeter. And he he said, look at how relaxed he is. Look at him. Look at how relaxed he is. Look, he wants the ball. He's calling for the ball. Right. Because he knows he's going to get the ball. And he's and he going to take it. that shot. He wants to take that shot. So anyways, yep. that leads to this epiphany of this is what's going to make him different. This is how I can appeal to him and his family, um, you know, about his greatness. And it's about it's a it's an opportunity to give other people a piece of that greatness. Right. Right. Like you and I could never be Michael Jordan. Right. But if we slip on a pair of his gear or sneakers that he wears somehow vicariously, we are you know living the, through him or something. The famous line in the movie is a Nike is just a Nike. Until my son, a shoe is just a shoe until, you know, yeah. Michael Jordan slips my his foot into it. into it. A shoe is just a shoe until my son steps into it. Yeah. Right. And she stole that line from Sonny. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know if that was licensed or not. Right. You know, um, I, I liked it overall. I, I did enjoy it. I agree. There was some great acting performances in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't as thrown off by Ben Affleck's uh, hair, hair, no, as I as I thought it might be. I didn't realize how bow legged Ben Affleck is, but that's a whole nother. Story. I didn't notice that. <laughs> Damian Young, when well, remember the scenes of Ben Affleck in these like, and see again with the reaction with the head. No, thing. I I was trying to think of what Ben I said. Affleck goes out for runs. They show him running. Yeah, and you know it's like his meditation. He goes on these runs, and he's got these really loud. Um, jogging tights on. Yeah. Right. These like compression pants, but yeah. you see him walking. I, I don't know. He just looked like he just got off a horse. But anyways, <laughs> Damien Young is the actor that plays Michael Jordan, whom you never see except from right. behind. Right. Um, which I like that choice that they didn't try it was to okay. like. That's what I had an somebody. issue with. Really? See, I they didn't. did it too much. They did. It was a little bit like crowbar. And I, in there. you probably don't remember this, but, when we did a first look on this, mm. I actually said in there, I don't think they show him. I think what they're going to do is show him from behind whoever the actor or yeah. stand is going to be. And that turned out to be a correct assumption. Although, you know, there was one time it was so forced mm -hmm. that for them to get that angle, they shouldn't yeah. have done, you know. It, it, I would agree. It was a little overdone. But yeah. So fast forward to, you know, Vaccaro secures the meeting. Right. He right. pulls off the the unthinkable almost. And he gets this meeting and the family's going to come and visit Nike so they can do their pitch. Right. To, to Michael and the family. Forget about the money. You're going to make enough money. It's not going to matter. Money can buy you almost anything. It can't buy you immortality. That you have to earn. And this this was one of the scenes I had a little bit of a problem with because the night before there, the the small Nike team, which is basically Jason Bateman, Damon Affleck, and and actually I want to mention Matthew Marr who plays uh, Peter, who is like the shoe engineer, the guy that really right came right. up with the shoe, yeah, right, and later would come up with the idea of replacing the. The, the swoosh, the swoosh with you know the sh the silhouette with him doing the jam, yeah, that famous jam contest. He passed back away when it was actually interesting. Good, yeah. He passed away uh, just before they announced production of this film. Oh is, wow, is what I read at the end of the film. Um, also, the the supposedly according to the film, the one that coined it, Air Jordan. Although Jordan's agent claims that he had said air jordan correct beforehand correct. Anyways, they they're they're talking about okay this is what we got to do and uh 
uh, you know, Phil, you need to come in seven minutes late to the meeting to show how important you are. And right. if you show up late, it'll make them think that they're joining. You right. know, it, they were just trying to present this front to the family. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then when you cut to that scene, and then sure enough, Affleck comes walking in seven minutes late as Phil Knight. But he literally is announcing as the character why he's late. Right. I'm late because I'm such a, I'm the CEO of this million dollar company. Right. Right. And I'm so important, but I, this was too important for me not to be here. Like it was real. I guess they were just trying to be funny. I can't imagine that actually happened, but right. I think they were just trying to be. And they went way humorous. over. The, now the here's mark. the thing I struggled with, which you haven't even mentioned, which is the, this whole idea of commodification, right? Cause that's really what this is about. Mm -hmm. Right. In, th in this case, you're commodifying a human being, right? Right. Or the, you know, uh, their essence or whatever you want to say. Right. Is this whole idea, which was unheard of, and this was set the precedent, was Jordan's mother negotiating with Vaccaro. Mm -hmm. that to get a would, percentage. To get a percentage of the gross sale of every Nike sold right. anywhere in the world. But he gets a piece of the revenue of the shoe and all future Air Jordan shoes. Right. Unheard of. Unheard of. And, and you know, Vaccaro's like, uh, you know, that's not how the business works. In right. Fact, you know, there's rules and this and that. Ultimately, of course, they agree. They pierce that. They pierce Probably that, yeah. for the worst. Which actually, there's some references to Vaccaro's involvement in a very famous case right? That had to do with college athletes getting paid mm -hmm. if their likeness was used or their name or whatever right. was used, right? Right. And and that's the thing. It, you, in order to become a pro, mm -hmm. you, you have to maintain your amateur status. Yeah. And because of that, stars in college can't profit from what the networks and everybody else is profiting from. And this is where I started to struggle with it because, you know, it was this idea that, you know, as she's negotiating, she's basically saying that, you know, if my son is who I believe him to be mm -hmm. as a human, but certainly as an athlete, mm -hmm. he's going to break all these records. He's going to be the greatest in all categories, right? He's going to win championships and et cetera. He's going to end up, carrying nike mm -hmm. not the other way around mm -hmm. right it's not that's what the relationship is ultimately going to be like but when they start talking about the the money that's exchanging hands now i get it mm -hmm. if nike's making billions jordan right. shouldn't be making tens of thousands of dollars like and, and remember there was the whole scandal where nike was having them made in china mm -hmm. and paying pennies true literally pennies for labor and they make some light references to that. I, it wasn't very prominent. No. In the, but there, there's a whole other about movie that. about licensing yeah. and the kind of money yeah. that these companies, you know, just, it just pours in. And like I said, colleges now, you know, like, you know, they'll, they'll sit an athlete down and they'll say, well, what do you think about this college? Now they're, they're an Adidas college. I can't go there. It has right. to be a Nike school. Well, just get, let's look at some stats here, or some some numbers. Um, Air Jordan. Mm -hmm. Now, what I got behind me are not Jordans. They're right. They're actually Nike Air. But anyways, four billion dollars in sales annually. Now, Jordan himself. Mm -hmm. This is in the movie. You can see yes. it at the end earns about $400 million passively. So basically for doing nothing. Yes. He still earns $400 million a year off the sale of Nikes, which is And incredible. a lot of guys like Jason Tatum, who is our star in, in the Boston Celtics. Uh, so Jason Tatum just put out his shoe, but instead of trying to compete, and this is, I guess, something that Nike does his shoe is under the Air Jordan line. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that uh, that picture of him, of Michael Jordan dunking is on Tatum's shoe. 
Okay. Instead of a picture of him. Interesting. Now, Nike goes on to buy Converse in 2003. So Mm -hmm. that ends that debate. Um, Right. Now, Jordan's net worth, I looked up his net worth, about $2.2 billion. Yeah. And he's part owner of the Charlotte Bobcats. Are they still that name? Is it the Bobcats? I don't know. You would know. The two of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They're they're horrible. (laughs) They make a point towards the end, too, to show how charitable Phil Knight is. He's donated a at least about two billion dollars to charity, which you know, yeah, of his net worth. I don't know. That That's that, like the, pocket change. It's a drop in the bucket. But Vaccaro's still alive, 83 years old. Um, I don't know if he was a consultant on the film. I mean, I imagine they met with him and talked with him. They had to have, right? Um, yeah. Here was an interesting thing. So the film opens with uh we mentioned the Springsteen song Born in the USA, which was kind of funny because there's a scene between Jason Bateman and Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. where Bateman's character, Rob Strasser, is telling him, hey, I was listening to this. So do you remember why the he's words. talking to him about this? Yeah, yeah the words says, aren't really what I thought Because that came were. out in June of 84. Right. That album. And he's telling him, you know, I, I was all patriotic. I'm waving, you know, I'm pumping right. my fist. And he goes, and then I listened to it again this morning. And, I, you know, it's not at all what the song is about. <laughs> right. I forget why they brought that a up. A debate the, we've had with many people at many different He, he was relating it somehow to something that Ficaro was dealing with in the film or whatever it was. I don't remember. But um, they, he was, they were born on the same day, Ficaro and Springsteen, September really? 23rd. Yeah. Um, Ficaro was born September 23rd, 39. Bruce was born September 23rd, 1949. So I thought that was a weird kind of coincidence. Yeah. But I liked it. I don't know what your thoughts are. I think Mel Turpin clearly got screwed. You know, it could have been uh, Air Turpin. Does, do you know who the number one pick was that year? No. No idea. See, the way the draft works is usually mm-hmm. the number one and number two. And we have some experience with this because we were Orlando Magic season ticket holders for a while. Right. And we got two back-to-back number one picks. And Shaq was far and away the number one pick, mm-hmm. you know, that, that year. The following year, we get the number one pick to go with Shaq. And we wind up drafting. Yeah. He was a I star know player, doing. but never reached. The Chris Webber. Pick. Chris Webber. Chris Webber. Thanks, Dan. Got so it. Chris Weber was considered a safe number one pick. Yeah. And he had a decent career. I don't even know if he has any championships or not, but we wind up trading for Anthony Hardaway, Penny mm-hmm. Hardaway. Penny Hardaway, yeah. And he was a solid guard to Shaq's dominance underneath. Mm-hmm. But Shaq wanted to be the, the guy – yeah. And people started cheering for Penny. Right. And it caused a rift. Shaq bolts. Yeah, there's the issues same in the locker thing room. happens yeah. with him and Kobe. Right. He they couldn't coexist, but the difference is they won three championships together. The Orlando Magic got nothing. Right. So and then we were no longer season ticket holders. But my whole point was the number one picks usually like this year. It's a kid that's seven five. He's literally, I think, nineteen. Yeah, and he's not just a minute bowl, you know, where he's just enormously tall. He can play. Mm-hmm. So imagine a, a seven five guy that's got some basketball he's skills. Got some skills, yeah. So he's clearly who I think it's Cleveland has the number one pick. He's clearly going to be the number one pick now. In Jordan's case, and and what happens is the number one pick doesn't always work out. And sometimes the 16th pick winds up being the star. Well, Jordan was slated like fourth, fifth. Yeah, That's not always a guarantee. That's kind of a Mm crapshoot. So for them to put all their money on him really was a gamble. Oh, very much so. I mean, this was well. That's how the film opens, right? It's following Vaccaro. Uh, he would go on these uh, high school basketball right. tournaments, right? He he formed one of them that's referenced in the film, 
I forget what they called it, but, um, and he would, you know, have these layovers in Vegas. He was uh, clearly a gambler just yes. in real life too, it, it seems. So, um, yeah, and he, no he always question. seemed to owe money. That was it, like referenced a couple It was times. absolutely a huge gamble. I mean, risk-taking is one of the biggest themes right. of the film, I think. But Phil Knight, it's how he built the company up, which is something that for Caro, at least Damon's portrayal of him kept having to remind Phil, right? Like, right. You sold these out of your car. Exactly. Where's that Phil Knight? You know, right. the scrappy kind of Take go-getter. Take the gamble. This is worth the gamble. Exactly. Now, you know, today they mm-hmm. scout to death. Well, let me say this is where this is what. Um, t- one thing before I, I get to my my main point, I wanted to make, which is. Uh, I'm assuming this is true. I, I don't know, but they they say in the film as they're designing the shoe, right? And this yes. has got to be the shoe. Yes, because they're only going to make one, right? Because because Damon said if you ma- Vicaro says if you make more than one, you immediately it, the value depreciates. Right, right. But there was this rule in the NBA that 51 percent of the shoe had to be white. That is true. Which sounds kind of racist, but yes, in, in fact. Michael Jordan was on David Letterman. Did he say that? Yes. And Michael did he Jordan, say that? What? Did he say it was racist? What? Here, here's what. No, here's what he said. Michael Jordan is telling him the rule. Okay. You know that. You know by the NBA okay. standards, he goes, "We have a little more red on there." And NBA, you have to have fifty percent white. And he said, "Hmm, that sounds like the NBA itself." Right. That's what Letterman said. This is the shoe that the NBA wouldn't let you wear? Yeah. Now, why wouldn't they let you wear it? Just because just it's ugly, I, I guess, for starters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I agree with you. They are ugly. Now, wait a minute. Didn't you help design these? It's the shoe, not the color. Oh, not the I color. Have anything to do with okay, the so, but what's wrong with the coloring? They, uh, what, what, what rule do we violate here? Well, it doesn't have any white in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, well, neither does the NBA. <laughs> That's it. I, that that uh, didn't you know escape me. I, I picked up on that. I thought, yeah, hmm, that seems that's interesting. Yes, very interesting. So I don't know if there's something there. now but today. Anyway. Today, I think it's a, it's different. I I don't know what the rule is. But but this was it's speaking of risks, right? So the, he says, well, what is the actual rule? He says, fifty one percent of the shoe has to be white, right? Correct. So then Bateman's like, well, what if we just put some more red in there? You know, what if we just, what if we just pay the fines because you get fined like two grand or something. dollars. Yeah, it was nothing. Whatever it was. We'll just pay the fines. Right. And that's what they decided to do, which of mm-hmm. course, you know, was part of the, the history making a shoe deal that actually went down. But where I really struggled was just when it gets to the real meat of it all, mm-hmm. where the negotiation is going down. Right. Uh, you know, and the mother, and I just, again, I understand that that Nike in this case shouldn't be profiting off of Jordan in any way that is unequitable. Mm-hmm. But it, I think of Gordon Gecko in, in Wall Street. He's like, how many yachts do you need to water ski behind? Like, how True. much is enough? True. How much? Two hundred. He'll take the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar guaranteed. You know, each year for the next five, which years was nothing. And- plus a Mercedes, but this gross that, and I look, it's genius. And quite frankly, it's led to a lot. Like, look at, look at all the charitable work in, in organizations they have set up under the Jordan mm-hmm. name and it, they mm-hmm. do good work. And so I'm not, I'm not knocking that. It's just, I think what it is, is the, the just the, the whole business model of sports, especially the NBA of, right. of all leagues and then probably the NFL next and then hockey's starting to, you know, they're not there yet, but they're way beyond where they used to be. Remember? Oh yeah. It was what well, Ray Bork was like one of the first million dollar player in the NHL or something. Wasn't that? And, the case? and David Postanak just signed a what? Postanak. 90 million. David Postanak. Postanak. You're laying it all hang out there. Yeah. But it's these guaranteed contracts. It's the guaranteed money. We used right. to joke, you know, you should be pay to play. Right. You know, merit pay. You go out there for every basket, you get, you know, a buck fifty. Right. You get whatever. And because remember the- Vaccaro, when she's making the deal, he says, Michael could like blow, you know, out, blow his out his knee tomorrow. And we're screwed. And and then she's like, Yeah, but if he does it, and then he does all these uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just yeah. wrestled with that part of it, you know. 
Yeah, there was quite a bit of soothsaying, and you wonder in hindsight, but you go back to that time. Yeah. And it, this was a huge gamble. You mm -hmm. know, nobody knew Michael Jordan was going to be, he was going to transform the NBA. Right. Which he did. You know, at the time, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson had really made the NBA popular. Yeah. You know, the NBA was struggling. And then when those two guys came along, given their college rivalry and, you know, then to have them on the Lakers and the Celtics, the two most successful and franchises. That was how the, the other companies were trying to sell the Jordan family to buy, go with them was look at these, uh, these legends that he's going to get to play with and be, and the mother was like, mm. see, again, part of her foresight, she's like, Correct. No, he's going to surpass all these guys. Right. So she saw a pass. In fact, it was something that Sonny Vaccaro tells her, right? When he goes to visit her in North Carolina, he says, okay, do me a favor. I'm going to tell you how those other meetings are going to go. And he says yeah. exactly what happens. Um, I, I'll make a bet with you. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how those meetings are going to go. And if I'm wrong, then, then don't take a meeting with Mikey. But if I'm right, please consider that, that you and Michael come out. Right. Right. The guy's going to come in. He's going to be wearing a Rolex. He's going to say this. He's going to do this. And, and they that. didn't overdo that. They that didn't overdo it. foreshadowing nice. when it happened. Yeah. They, they made you notice it, but just didn't enough. stick it down your throat. Right. Right. And I thought Affleck did a good, because remember, he's behind the camera on this too. And I thought he did right. a, a really nice job. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I can't, how could you blame her for, mm -hmm. you know, I probably would have done the same thing. And she right. was more than just a mother proud of her son. She was his agent for all intent purposes. She was. Yeah. Cause you even know. the father was like, you, you know, I'm out here if you need any help. Lois, I'm out here if you need me. Okay, baby. All right. Right. He was no, hands off and yeah. they were kind of estranged for a while. The, the, the mother and father. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, the, the, the son. Michael oh, oh the son. Father. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 And then his father was of course tragically killed. Yeah. Which um, there's still some funkiness. Very sad. There. Um, did you, did you know this about Adidas and how they got the name? I never really looked that deeply into it. No, but, but according to, According, and there's a shakeup apparently at this time going on in Adidas where something happens to their CEO. Does he take ill or something? Because then, like, a brother and sister take it over, which it's a little shaky. And that didn't help hmm. their deal too much when they're trying to sell it to the family. Like, I think the sister was in charge and she didn't know jack about anything to do with basketball or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess the CEO's name was Adolf, and it was yeah Adi Dossler, Adi Das, yeah Adidas. That's where yes. the name. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Did you catch Jay Moore in this film, the comedian? He, he was in there for a second. Just a he was and a glimpse yeah, of him. On, just a glimpse of Jay Moore. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was not. It was it was nice to see. I always liked Jay Moore because he I, was in uh, Jerry, was in Jerry McGuire. McGuire. And as played an agent. Eight. Yeah, yeah, he was fantastic. So, he was fantastic. He's another, he's from our neck of the woods, isn't he? Like New Hampshire or somewhere up there? Or, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's New York. Yeah. Anyways, I overall thought it was a good film. I thought mm -hmm. Affleck did a great job directing it. And you're right. I agree. He was able to capture the essence of the time. Um, it was really fun in the beginning. It was a huge montage of all things 80s. Right. I knew you would like that. It was really nice. And then they didn't cram it in throughout the film after that. It was just here and there. Right. Like you'd hear and a song. It or... was the soundtrack primarily mm -hmm. that really captured it. And then sometimes it was just the score, not even the actual song, like Sister Christian by Night Ranger or something right, obvious right. and tempted by squeeze. You mentioned, which that's was right. Cause we had just we talked, were talking about about that. That. Yeah. talked about that. Actually, we talked about in an episode when I kind of under my breath sent black coffee in bed. That's right. That's right. So, but I, I, I thought it was really well done. I enjoyed it. I mean, I would definitely, if you got prime. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, and, you know, that was out. the thing. 
I don't know if you knew for sure. I but, was no, I was not. I think I said, think it's on Prime. Yeah, and I and then, I went to Prime. I'm like, I wonder yeah. how long it had just come out, but yeah, I would still. I I, I would check it, it out. I, I you're right. It's not. If you love basketball, you don't care anything about basketball. Like I'm not right. a real fan. It's of not the a sport, problem. To be honest, it's not. It's a good movie. It's a good. It's an interesting story. Right. Um, as you said, there's actually a couple of different stories, sort of going, you know, threaded throughout. Right. Um, you some, could you could do a couple of movies based on some of the principles, like sure. you know that equitable and and you know video games remember nba jam mm -hmm. at the time was a huge game yeah who's not in nba jam the original roster michael, michael jordan. jordan yeah he was the only nba player right. not in that game because of a certain kind of way he was represented yeah. just like larry bird negotiated a deal um when he was with the celtics to stay with the celtics and now every player after they've been in the league so many years has what's called Larry Bird rights, <laughs> which is a whole other story I won't go into. But yeah, it, it's strange how a fluke kind of negotiation can affect mm -hmm. the entire league. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. That, and one last thing, Dan, I thought it was sort of clever the way they didn't show the shoe. Remember, they showed the reactions to the shoe, but it was almost like Pulp Fiction with the gold. Well, off. initially, but you do see it. Eventually, you yeah. do. No, I wrote it down. The Pulp Fiction reveal. I literally wrote <laughs> Isn't that Isn't that down. funny? Yeah. yeah. Now, this, uh, before we wrap, this, um, it's got a 73 meta score on IMDb. Uh, it's got 92% uh, from the critics, 98% from the audience out on Rotten Tomatoes. So, if you don't take it from us, take it from a bunch right. of others that right. you know, have reviewed it and seen it already as well. But yeah, really good film. I'm, I'm glad I checked it out. I didn't tell you I was watching. This is what no. I was last night. I was watching I it didn't last know. night. I didn't know. Yeah. And, I, and I'm glad you watched it. And I kept saying just because I, I thought the 80s stuff would hook you right away. Yeah, so it did. Just watch 10 minutes. Oh, it did hook me right away. <laughs> and I thought. It really well, he'll did. see that stuff and he'll stay tuned. But really, really good performances. Again, Matt Damon, Jason Bateman, Ben Affleck also directed Chris Messina, who played David Falk, who is Jordan's agent, mm -hmm. was really good. Viola Davis, we mentioned uh, Damian Young as Jordan. Chris Tucker was really, really good. Uh, Damon Matthew did Moore. the heavy lifting for sure. You know, Matt Damon. Sure. Oh, sure. Sure. You know. Yeah. But it was a it was a nice uh, yeah. ensemble. It was a nice yeah. ensemble. It was. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, there you go, folks. Uh, Review for. Check out Air. Air. Now and streaming on Prime. Somebody challenged us in the first look about how much money it would make. What it was going to make. We were pretty much. Do you, right want on... see, you, want to, you want to look up what it's made right now? I know. Now, this we is had... just according to IMDb. Mm -hmm. Worldwide gross is dollars the budget ninety million, um, so it's only grossed like fifty two something in change. Oh, I was gonna say, do you remember US. what our prediction was? I thought it was less than a hundred. It was eighty eight million, oh, and we man. based that on boom, nailed it. A, a budget of thirty million. So we somewhere that number was wrong. Maybe, well, I don't know where we got the budget of thirty million. Yeah, maybe um, the advertising budget sometimes <laughs> can. I think it was thirty Perhaps. million to make the movie, and they ninety million dollars was the budget. Yeah, I mean that's what it says here, anyways. Yeah, but eighty nine is the worldwide gross. So, yeah, thank God. Well, Keith now Garvey. everything you know, whatever Keith they got Harvey. from, yeah. is it out on disc yet? I don't think it's out on disc. No, yet, it's streaming it? on Prime, as I said. Yeah, no, but don't it's get free. Ahead of yourself. Usually, once it's streaming for free, it's and, already out. And Jordan gets a piece of every. 4k digital that's sold anywhere you buy it yeah actually i would imagine he probably does right he yeah must. that's why these guys Somehow. that these guys at the top of the draft wind up whether or not they sir, make it as a star yeah they got they this wind up being money. paid like a star right and right. they all, wind up being the, set up for life. It's all the licensing deals, and yes. you know, it's like it's like concerts, right? It's the money's really made at the merchandise table. You know, that's Michael, why you're paying seventy five dollars for a sweatshirt. And, 
you know, exactly. Michael Jordan was the highest paid player in the NBA, but mm -hmm. he dwarfed that amount with what he made from Nike and ballpark Franks. And well, look, 400 million a year passively just off. Nike. Right. It's a chew. I mean, good Lord. Right. How, so it's two. Thumbs I may up be a, I may be a stick puppet. It's two thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. As do I, I liked it. All right. That's going to do it for another episode of the old brother podcast. I'm your host, Dan Smith, alongside me as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Stay cool.